My uncle says, yo, you got a bunch of pork chop. They're eating the pork chops in the house. They don't care. They don't, everything's great. Mm-hmm. They don't worry about what's going on back home. Mm-hmm. And and this, I mean, this is this is a diasporic problem with all, you know, mm-hmm. indigenous people. Mm-hmm. And this, if we do not get the diaspora involved in a way that is not a parasitic relationship yeah. to Haiti going back and feeling that you are chef section because you got greenbacks in your pocket. You know, mm-hmm. either you, you run the corner or you run the environment. Basically, you got, you have some money. We're gonna have problems mm-hmm. because there, there, there's got there's no and I, I don't mean to be pessimistic. I don't see any oppositional force coming within the Haitian community, at least in the diaspora, to address these issues because they still have this ridiculous, you know, you know, conflicts of oh, say say fort la la la, say fort something. This kind of was like they're blaming oh, it's Aristide's fault. This is like this is beyond yeah, all of these that's guys. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. This that's is right. beyond all of these guys. This is a plan that they all, regardless of who's in power, would have to succumb to because no one is putting up the opposition. And that's why it's really important when you talk about building movements. I wish I could see at least the beginning of a movement within the Haitian community to address these issues politically. Because sadly, there's a lack of mobilization around them for one of them. Let's, let's talk maybe a little bit about the Haitian community because we need to understand how mobilization within the Haitian uh, community actually uh, corresponds to class interests. That's a big problem. Because when Bingo. you look at class interests, there used to be a time where, under the Duvalier dictatorship, there was an appearance of almost huge anti dictatorship, mostly anti dictatorship. Right. mobilization. And that, that kind of like lent, lent, lent the image that we're all united against Duvalier. Right. Because all of us were in somehow, some way, political exiles. Although you had a still a small sex, section of, of right. pro-Duvalier mm-hmm. in, 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 in the Haitian community. But as soon as you had the fall of Duvalier, class divisions really came to the fore. Because then you were looking at post-dictatorship what kind of class projects were you actually in favor of in Haiti? Were you in favor of continuing imperialist penetration and domination and capitalist exploitation in Haiti? Those kinds of projects. Or were you in favor of popular, popular mobilization and struggles in resistance and popular revolution? So those class divisions came, came right away as soon as you had 1986 Paul Now you had the emergence of populism with, with the Lavalas movement which actually kind of muddled the lines, because what Lavalas did, even though Aristide started out as a very radical liberation the- 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 theology priest, priest, I mean, he had a record that says capitalism is a mortal sin. Right. I mean, that's, that's radical. I mean, I'm with that man. But as soon as he engaged in the, elect- in the electoral process. He started making compromises. Yeah. I mean, he got into power. It's like marriage with the army. You know, started dealing with the IMF. I said, okay, all right, we got to start implementing the Oliver Reform. It's very but similar to the Mandela situation yeah. that for you to get out, you got to sign on to XYZ. Mm-hmm. So that mm-hmm. Irish is like, for you to come back, you got to sign on to XYZ. But and he started signing on to some XYZ. But still, he had retained it's a, a huge popular, popularity. And right away, what happened? Just eight months after he got into office, a coup. Mm-hmm. What did they do? They brought him back 24,000 years of Marines. They said, you know what? Sign on here, don't even look at it. Don't even look at what you're signing. That was the uh, the governor's island report. The governor's island report. Yes. Don't yeah, even look. Well, this book. Don't even look at what you sign. Just sign the paper. Mm-hmm. We're bringing you back. You're going to do exactly what we tell you to do. Twenty-four thousand marines bring him back, and in state, it's institute this U.S. U.N. occupation of Haiti. Yep. So this is the first example of the head of a state of a country accepting military occupation of a country to bring him back to power. First example in history. And, yeah. and it has set a huge precedent that, that you know, Nelson Mandela denounced, right. and Cubans denounced, for example. Because when you do that, you are compromising the sovereignty of that, of, of, of that country. And even though there was you know, evident relief because uh, when you had the, the periods of, of the, four, the four years of the coup, you had thousands of people who were massacred. Were massacred over 5,000 people and all of those, yeah. Yeah, were, were, were massacred. So there was, there was an immediate relief from that, that kind of, of, of terror. 
what you had with the return of Lavalas under constraint of, of, of occupation was the strict implementation or the forced implementation of neoliberal, of neoliberal, 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 neoliberal. And uh, if, if we look at a little bit at, at the internal class struggles, I think it's, it's, it's important to understand those. Uh, uh, during the Duvalier years, 29 years of Duvalier, which preceded the, 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 uh, the 1986 uh, fracture. Yeah. Uh, revolt, popular revolt, which led to the ouster of Duvalier. Mm. During those 20, 29 years, you had the formation of, of a bureaucratic bourgeoisie. In a, a sector of the bourgeoisie which l took hold of state investments, like in Aol, Simonaiti, yes, Tabac, uh, uh, Minodri. Uh, so all these state enterprises, they took hold of those and they were able to use these funds for their own pockets. Now, the same bureaucratic bourgeoisie was also the, uh, the they ruled the army, they ruled the Tonton Makuts, they, they ruled the repressive force. So they had the means of repression and they, uh, they capitated the capital, the state capital, and they used that for their own interests. They were even able to develop their own business ventures through this accumulation of capital. Kambuan, had uh, had uh, sold cadavers, sold blood. I mean, I mean, crazy, crazy. Yeah. But, but but this this bureaucratic bourgeoisie was able to entrench itself in the so social fabric of Haiti and became the hegemonic fraction of the power block yeah. in in Haiti. Now, when that uh, bureaucratic bourgeoisie was his, his hegemony was compromised by the fall of Duvalier. You had a period of, of huge instability in Haiti and, and, and of, of, of eternal struggle within the ruling class of Haiti to establish a new hegemonic fraction. Right. And within that process, you had populism that came in and, and the emergence of what, what, what popular language called the, 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 the moniker of Grand So Grand are the bourgeois that allied themselves, the bourgeois fraction, that allied themselves with the, the populist movement, mm -hmm. the Lavalas movement, to make money on top of all the schemes that they could, they could uh, manufacture through uh, the, the rule and, and the power that Lavalas was holding. And I'm talking not the first reign of Lavalas, but the second one mm -hmm. was brought back. But, but so you had, you had a process during that, that period of time of intense political struggle for reconstituting a, a hegemonic uh, fraction in, uh, of the ruling classes and a process where there was alliances between former enemies of Lavalas. Makuts were brought into, were, were yep. you know, former Makuts were brought into, were brought into office. You know, let's, let's see how we can get, you know, get along and, 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 and just build back this bureaucratic bourgeoisie. Mm -hmm. And, and, and part of the opposition to neoliberalism came actually from from this uh, from this uh, bureaucratic bourgeoisie because this bureaucratic bourgeoisie right away <coughs> was holding on to state assets and using state assets to to its own to its own benefits. Benefit. But okay. Okay. So for example, I want to leave time, and this is a terrific conversation. But I want to leave time for Cole to say a few words from her perspective, from her background. And then um, we're gonna, I'm going to ask one question, and I'm going to open it for questions for people. Okay, well, I'm going to make mine fast because I think it's been such an interesting thing. I think there's some elements that we need to add, and we started with the gold piece. You know, what what is Haiti today? What is Jamaica today in terms of the critical resources that the imperialists have designs on? And what will that mean in terms of developing movements among the people to be able to take control of their own resources? The second thing is in terms of the echo piece, of the, 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 the echo, possible echo social development, the return to the potential echo social systems in Haiti, because uh, I think Haiti was headed in that direction uh, at the reclaiming of its, its, its human selves and independence. I think we need to talk about that, you know, whether it's the, 
reforestation e efforts of uh, of the efforts to keep out Monsanto uh, grains and whatever else. A little bit of, of discussion around that uh, because I think that the that is probably where we are now with Haiti except for the land piece and its potential of becoming another little paradise like New Orleans. I say it always reminds me of New Orleans uh, for the very wealthy uh, place to go and drink some Kool-Aid or whatever it is you drink. Um, Mint julep. Yeah. <laughs> and so we see the evolution of these hotels, the buying up of land. Uh, we see the, 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 the creation of new Project Hope zones, uh, the free trade zones. We see these things happening before our eyes, but that means taking up more land. So I think that those are issues that we, that we, that we probably need to spend some time on in terms of, of, of where do we go from here. And the role of the IMF and making sure, making sure that the people who are indeed the true Haitians never have the opportunity to own themselves again. Uh, they extended 1.2 billion, we know, with the earthquake yeah. uh, as money to help the government out. The government just received 10 billion from other places. We don't know what the hell it is, but mm -hmm. the IMF extends uh, 1.2 billion as if this is a big thing. Look, we gave them. And we don't know where the other money is. Uh, but I think that these are discussions that we need and that the general public needs to know um, that are critical issues that we need to deal with, with where Haiti is concerned. And they extend to Jamaica, they extend to, to Honduras and Colombia and wherever else, because these are the same places in the end where the, the, the imperialists are concerned. Mm -hmm. So I think we, we were part of that design. And then what groups do we have that are really Stepping forward, we just had the de to defend Haiti's to defend ourselves conference in Haiti, attended by ten governments of the region, uh, all there, talking about how uh, they could help to get the United Nations out. Do we need the UN out? I, I think that is a that's question that's that's that we need yeah, to deal that's, with. That's, that's, that's uh, <laughs> not even debatable. We need the UN out. Do we need the UN out? Why uh, is the UN in Haiti? Yeah, in the first place, yes. I mean, these only. Are, international military mission in a country where there is actually no conflict. Amen. I mean, did they call the UN to go into Mexico? We got over 10,000 people dying in a, in, a, in a war, so-called war on drugs in Mexico every year. Uh, is there any call for the UN to go to Mexico? The UN is in Haiti for one sole purpose, and it's to ensure the implementation of neoliberalism. That's yeah, true. The only purpose. And that's why in 2009, for example, when you had thousands of workers who took the street and, and, and blockaded the whole industrial park of Sadafi. What are the forces that intervened and pointed their, their machine guns at the workers? It's the UN forces. So it's very clear what role the UN, they're not, they're not pointing their, their machine guns at the bourgeois elites. They only point their machine guns at, at, at the popular the forces, class. at the working class. So it's very clear what kind of stabilization this UN mission for stabilization is, is in place to perpetuate, perpetuate. It's the stabilization that allows for the full implementation of the new development. And we'll only pull out in the next five years when the police force is on the ground what do you to do? represent them. But, uh, <laughs> you just, you're laid into something here, which if you look at what's happening in Greece and all these different countries, Haiti and Jamaica, it is an assault on the working class. Exactly. Yes. You know, that's taking exactly. place. You know, and a part of what we work as in terms of making work of March is we have to redevelop the working class and have it have an international perspective so that we can tackle the issue. We talk about austerity in Greece and austerity and globally. And globally, right? How does that affect the class? Because it's a global phenomenon. We think we think it's happening in Greece by itself, which is happening in Haiti by itself because everybody's looking in their own little backyard not realizing that while you're looking in your backyard, that big dog is looking in all of y'all's backyard and eating from all of y'all's plate, right? So how do we globalize the struggle of the class? Because that's really what, that's, that's really the only constructive methodology is how the eight hour day became, mm -hmm. it became an international phenomenon, right? In which the, the, the struggle was taken beyond the border of New York and Chicago and what have you, and start to be embraced across the world. How do we do that in the 21st century to start to address it? We look at what's happening in Brazil right now with the displacement uh, of poor folk to build 
for the Olympics and I think the World mm -hmm. Cup uh, is yeah. coming there and they are just going in with Sorry. bulldozers and just yeah. uh, destroying, you know, poor shanty towns and what have you. Those are working class people. Those are the people that are pushing a little car and selling a, a coconut or whatever. Jamaica was selling coconut, sugar cane, mm -hmm. what have you. That independent, what you call them independent workers, uh, you know, how do we protect them? Because they are workers. You know what I'm saying? The people, the people that's in, the, I don't know, I'm sure you have free zones in Haiti like they have them in Jamaica. Yeah. Where mm -hmm. they work for subsistence wages and can't, can't pick themselves up, right? How do we, who still have uh, a little bit of leverage left, how do we build that consciousness across international so boundaries? Yeah. question. I think you're yes. on mind yes. yes. here. Yes. Right in my mind. My question was, why is it important for this conversation, it's a loaded question, that this conversation be heard and taken seriously by activists in the United States in, the, in view of the strength of the of TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership? Because neoliberalism is a global cancer, mm -hmm. bottom line. It is a global cancer. I mean, we can look at neoliberalism here in the U.S. I mean, Charter schools. Charter, look, at, look at cutbacks. I mean... The, the screw is being turned here in the U.S. maybe a little bit more gradually, more subtly, because they're having Democrats do it a lot of the time. Most of the Reagan... What's the difference? What, what's, what, yeah. That's what's a good the, question. Yeah. The damn Democrat and the Republican. <laughs> exactly. That damn Cobra got two heads. One yeah, smiles yeah. at you, the other sniffs. It's the yeah, same yeah. Cobra. <laughs> Most of the anti-welfare welfare agenda was implemented by Clinton. Clinton. Not by Reagan. Got rid of the FDC. You know, uh, look at what's happening uh, uh, under Obama today. The continuation of the Bush agenda. Mm -hmm. Nationally and internationally. Mm -hmm. By, you know... Some people would, would even argue. They expanded even, on it. Even, expanded even, on yeah. it. By far, by sure. Yeah, so it's when we say to so defend Haiti is to defend ourselves, we're really getting at that, that, you know. As workers in this country, we lost our pensions. Yeah. We're losing our medical rights. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, we, we, we have benefits. The, in these we, countries like they, the U.S. and Europe, they're trying to move to a post labor economy. They're they bashing need you. Yeah, there's a systematic women, yeah. attack against the union movement here. They're going systematically after public sector unions. Yeah. I mean, that's neoliberalism here in the U.S. So this is not something in terms of solidarity with workers abroad. It's workers here mm -hmm. fighting for their own rights here. It's a common struggle with workers everywhere. So now I want to give an opportunity because we have just a few minutes left for people in the audience if they have any questions to ask one or all of the panelists. Um, um, you mentioned earlier, you discussed that it was important to globalize the struggle, and you mentioned that political solutions, structural solutions are key to resolving I was wondering if the Green Party and any other progressive parties, I know Socialist International has a, um, a party in Haiti that's a member, but I'm wondering if the Green Party has any connections with political parties or progressive political parties in Haiti. Uh, there is a Green Party in Haiti. I have no connections with it. Okay. So <laughs> there's no connection between the Green Party? Yeah, no, that has really not been on the part of the Green Party a serious effort, I don't feel. To connect with the, in quote, third world, first world struggles, and uh, to connect with the issues. If you look at the Green Party president, uh, well, presidential candidate spoke here. There was no mention of indigenous people and their issues. That's right. There was no serious yeah. mention of incarceration issues, and that was a couple days ago. I mean, was right. that a day ago? When it? Yeah. Uh, so what I'm saying is, is that the Green Party has to take itself seriously. And until it takes itself seriously and give up the racism, the ethnocentrism, and began to stop the game of trying to become Democrats or to mm. replace the Democrats, it thought. cannot be a party at all. And that's why it's not moving forward. Because you know, who needs another Democratic party? We got one. <laughs> question here? Question. Yeah. Um, I, are you familiar with um, Pierre Lebossier, yeah. the Haiti Action Network? He's an activist in San Francisco. He's a, he's a Haitian. Not, not by me. But, but one of the things, he he's, uh, goes to Haiti often and, and, and has a lot of contact with, with Haitian people. And one of the things that he's been conveying to us in the area through KPFA, this uh, the radio, is that, and you probably can comment on this because there hasn't been any discussion, but that is the indomitable spirit of the Haitian people, is, despite all of the things that have been perpetuated against them, the spirit that drove them for their liberation 
is still in the people today because there is resistance going on. There, there is the Monsanto case is a perfect example. That is yeah. the best I, example, I, I think, of recent resistance. I, I just think that we need to talk about that because that's a very important element, I think, in terms of our struggle. I mean, you know, some of us who become educated, going to Harvard and Mary, not even Harvard, City College or whatever the case may be, have uh, have opted to just say, well, there's certain things we cannot change, and we need to just, you know, become, you know, try to educate our children and get they along. Wind up, get along they going. wind up going to work for Monsanto or wind up going to work for Goldman Sachs. But I just think that it's something very inspirational about the people in Haiti. They, they don't seem to give up. Could you comment on Jack, that? I, I will comment that. I think that the phenomenon you're talking about is true among Haitians who have not become intoxicated by class privilege. In other words, what you will find is that the, 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 the integrity, the soul of the Haitian people, to, in my opinion, is with the poor, the working class, the peasant class. These are the salt of the earth amongst the Haitian people, in my opinion, from my experience. But that same salt, you give them a job working as an LPN or RN in a nurse in, a, in the U.S. for a year, they want to go back and buy a Cadillac and drive and have a nice little chateau in, you know, Petron Ville. Because they have different class aspirations. Because they have different right. class aspirations. And this is the thing about class in Haiti. It is intoxicatingly aspirational in that everybody wants to be in that class. Everybody. The, the, the sense of class antagonism is not a strong part of the Haitian cultural ethos. Because it was, I mean, I don't think there's a country in the Western Hemisphere more ripe for class revolution than Haiti. I mean, you got to ask yourself, how are you going to be a, a, you know, a peasant in Haiti where you have a guy driving a Range Rover in mud, splashing it on you, you can't, you're eating dirt sandwiches, and you don't see something wrong with this picture? Mm -hmm. It's because we have, you kind of acquiesce to the functionality of Sassi Mission. That, 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 that reality, unfortunately, is infused in the culture in a way that takes away, it, it takes away uh, the uh, antagonism towards those internal oppressors, but it has not taken it away to the antagonism towards external oppressors, like Monsanto, mm -hmm. like other things. Particularly when it comes to the farming uh, class in Haiti, they are very protective of their land. They understand when Monsanto was trying to sell those seeds, they were like, we're not gonna have that. And they threw, they burned those seeds, they threw them away. So that exists. But the thing is, though, the danger is that it can be co-opted. And I worry about that when we try to mobilize those segments, which are the majority of the Haitian people, against the oppression that they face. The militarism is not to change. This is in Jamaica too. It's to join the it's to join the bourgeois. Yeah, yeah. It's to become a part of it. It's not to say that this uh, way of life is wrong and abhorrent. You know, it's just a, I just want in. And if I can get in, I'm smooth. Yeah. And, but I still think we ought to say brothers but, that there is much to be said by that indomitable spirit of people that have gone through in our very recent memory Massive, four, 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 four hurricanes back to back. Oh, massive earthquake. Invasion after invasion. All kinds of crises. We're and yet back. when you see the Haitian people, yeah, always fighting back. Yeah. And I think that that is, that is a spirit that you don't see among most people Case in the world. Point. Yeah. Case in point, if you yeah. go back to, to May Day this year, there were significant mobilizations, and I think strides forward particularly this year in this mobilization. In Cape Haitian, for example, you had over 5,000 people took the streets and protested. And, and you had an alliance between working class movements and, and popular demand against land grabs, for example, in, in, in terms of the construction of, uh, of, of the, the new airport in, in Cape Haitian. And, and the road around that airport that they're trying to clean up because they want to make it look pretty for the tourists that are going to come. So there's a lot of land grabs and land, land evictions. So there's a whole co co coalescence of, of popular movements with working class participation and initiative it, 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 that, that's leading, that, that's building up. And it's one of the first signs that you saw people rising up. And you even see politicians going up and say at the front of that seat, you know, vote for me. No, no, it was people rising up and for demonstrating the for the mass movement, demonstrating for their rights, for exactly for their own demands. And you had similar things happening <coughs> in Port-au-Prince, in, in, in New Ballet, uh, in, in Wanamed, the free trade zone in Wanamed. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and this is all around May Day. 
all around Main Day. I think significant is something that needs to be built upon. Is there um, another question back here? Um, I just want you guys to address the, um, the situation about corruption in the Caribbean country. Um, and I'll give you an example. Back in the days when um, I remember, you know, I used to work at the University of the West Indies. And what I'm, I remember that I was part of the whole left movement where a lot of these guys who went to University of the West Indies was, got free, free education through the, um, the PNP government. And what happened now, those guys were very radical. A lot of them was even communists who started the communist movement in Jamaica. Well, not started it, because that was started by Buchanan years before. But what happened, I go back to Jamaica now, and I see those guys are in power. And what happened, the country is so corrupted. So can I address the old Caribbean situation and corruption within those government? and how it affects the working class people and their ability to survive. Corruption is relationship to crime. Mm -hmm. I think for me, personally, when, when people ask me about corruption when it comes to government, in, particularly in Haiti, I say, I, my, my response, and I can only speak more so to the Haitian example, is corruption is always a product of attempts at destabilization. If you have a country that has not been allowed to have a functioning infrastructure politically and legally, and constantly has had to have be at the service of a parasitic in international class of foreign occupiers. It, the, the, the tradition of fiduciary responsibility, financial, fiscal responsibility, these things are things that need to be built in almost a cultural fashion in a government institution. They don't just happen overnight. And if you have never had them, it's hard to develop them. And part of the problem is that in a situation in Haiti where our government has been intentionally made to be dysfunctional because it's basically been destabilized over time, it's very difficult to infuse these types of fiduciary responsibilities and roles in our government functionaries. That's not an excuse because if you're an elected official, you have a responsibility. But what I'm saying is that it would be a lot easier to have that kind of fiduciary responsibility and fiscal responsibility if we did not have foreign governments that made such an effort to destabilize our political infrastructure. I think I'd like to add to that, because you have a structural situation in Haiti. When you look at the weight of imperialist domination from all standpoints, political and economic and ideological, that, that there is very, very little avenues for... for Legitimate economic... Yeah, so, so you have opportunism that expresses itself to people who get elected into office and they seize their, their, their elected office as a way to get rich. To get rich. There's no other way to, there's, not, there's no avenues. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, 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 you, if you graduate from university in Haiti, you can't find a job. Mm -hmm. So you get a job in government, guess what? That's, that's where right. you're gonna make your money. So that's part of the situation that has institutionalized corruption in Haiti. And, and, and this institutionalization is part of the process of building of a bureaucratic bourgeoisie as if a, a, a dominant and hegemonic class fraction in the social fabric of Haiti itself. So I think it, it goes exactly in, in, in the same vein as when you try to, to explain why there isn't this culture of fiscal responsibility and fiduciary. I mean, these guys are out there to fill their own pockets, and it's, 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 it's a process that is determined by the by the by the actual structure of the of the social fabric of the country. Yeah, the, 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 it's positioning yourself into a place where you can take, not give. Yeah, exactly. So that so that so that government service is a methodology to get. I mean, not give. a perfect example. How much can we as Americans are uh, living in America talk about that when you have Eric Holder saying that the banks that rob two twenty to forty trillion dollars from the globe in the subprime crisis are too big to jail. You have HSBC, who basically is acting as a drug laundering company mm -hmm. for major narco trafficking, yeah. being told by our attorney general that he can't investigate them. So if we want to talk cast aspersions about corruption in government, yeah. in third world governments that don't even have twenty trillion dollar GDPs, let's talk about what's going on at home yeah. as well. Yeah. But it fuels. Yeah, yeah I, I think the, 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 the big issue here, here, though, is that you know, in terms of Haiti, we need the United Nations out. In terms of Haiti, we need a cancellation of all debt. 
Exactly. All debt. I think oh, no bad. But I think you need and a cancellation of debt throughout the Caribbean. Yeah, I, mean, I, I would agree. Yeah, because, I'm, I'm because saying all it. of them said they've all been victimized. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that we all have system. to come and together as, as, as nations of the West, these little national states sent up by the European that we all own, and say to the world, we're not going to pay any debt. That the debt is over. That the, that that the city court will return to Haiti all the gold that was taken in 1915 when the United States invaded. Talking about the French, exactly. we took all of Haiti's gold in 1915. We don't know how much it all was even. Uh, but we need to be able to say that we need to say that there will be no more tenant evictions in Haiti. That people have a right to their land, right to their homes, and that should be protected. We need to be able to say to Haiti and to the world that there will be reparations paid by the United States, the UN, Amen. Canada. France will not only return the 20 plus billion that it owes Haiti, but it will pay reparation for the recent crisis, and so will Canada and Brazil, if need be. I mean, these are the kind of things I think we need to begin to talk about as, as a people of the world. Uh, Qaddafi can't say it anymore because when he started saying it, it's we wiped smoking. him out. Mm -hmm. He's so, been wiped so out. So could yeah. say this is our vision of what, where we want to go, what we can get. And our next task is to figure out how we're going to get to that vision, yes. if this is our vision. And we have one more, couple, one more yeah, question. Yeah, I want to make a, a comment, because I think that the, the points that Colia and, and this distinguished panel has made today, we, we need to be able to broaden this discussion so that, I mean, this is taking place here today at the left forum, but we need to have these discussions at our labor unions. We need to have these discussions in our churches. We need to have these discussions in our social organizations. So that, so that people's consciousness can be raised. Because folks have doubt about the whole question of reparations. Because they really don't understand what it really and truly means. I mean, like, what I mean by what I mean by that is, they think that it is something wrong for black people to ask for reparations. But they don't have an international concept of, as to how, how this all works. Countries do get reparations. We do get reparations. So we don't deserve it because our skin is black. Our skin is black. So what I'm saying is these kinds of discussions need to take place and we need to work on broadening that. And I think that with Chris's participation here, because he is a trade unionist, yes. glad to see that there's a trade unionist on the yeah, man, bro. here at the forum. Um, yes. and, and, and Brother Pascal. Robert, I'm glad that I've become familiar with Let's pull a little this. You guys Google yeah. my name. You yeah, find it on my right. He is brilliant. And yeah, then I, can, I'm looking at you know, uh, I take from my report. I, I, okay. <laughs> oh, did you really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So anyway, I just hope that this I'm can... getting you back to you. Can, we can take this on the road, so to speak, and into the union. Well, I'm gonna, and, and, and to the million man march. So, uh -huh. I, I yeah. So the next yes. time the million man march is meeting, it ought well, to be about this discussion. We're going to take it to the million man march. The million man march. The million march. Uh, we can work on March. I'm calling it me and me. Gentlemen, I want to thank you. More women, so I can tell you about the oh, women. Oh, we're out of here. Thank you. Thank you, Cecile. Very good. Love you, darling. I want to say what I know is up to the table. Hold on. I just want to wrap up here a little bit. No, that's the radio. When I moved to upstate New York, and I've been living here for 30 years, and it's a very small rural town, after a while, I said to myself, oh my God, I thought I left Jamaica, but I'm back in Jamaica because of the corruption. Because of the, the corruption is unbelievable. Amen. Uh, so that's part of what motivated me to pull this wonderful panel together. And i got to say, of all the panels that I've been to this weekend, it's easy best. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.